Hi all, welcome to my channel, welcome to John's Model Making. Today I've received the Spitfire latest issue 63 to 66. Excellent. Now in stage 63 we have the left and right side fusilized frames. So that will uh, extend the body. Um, I think we'll probably only be missing the uh, tail wings then and the brother. Um, but um, let's get these in place shall we uh, hopefully we'll get all four issues done today and uh, we can upload the video and uh, you can have a gander at it um, I know in 64 we do have a lower fusilized part there we go that's looking nice and bonny I'm not took it out of the packaging yet this is 63 so anyway without further ado let's get on with the build okay doc i'll have a look at the magazines as well a little bit later uh stage 63 is going to be pretty straightforward we've got uh, a parts checklist of 6301 the fusilized frame left side and 6302 fusilized frame right side we've got 6 km 2 times 3 mil screws and 3 pm 2 times 6 mil screws okie dokie so let's get the parts out of the bag there we have one two and the screws are all together let's get the screws out of the bag there we go there we go excellent get the screwdrivers move that out of the way okay no. take the left side fusilized frame 6301 and check the fit against the left side of the model the screw holes at the end of the part 6301 red arrows should align with screw holes on, on part 6001 at the same time the screw hole at the bottom of part 6301 fits beneath the screw holes in the housing parts excellent so basically do, do, do. let's turn around i'll put her on a lazy susan ah uh, we fit here oh we can't see that now let's have a look let's get the right part first anyway right. there which is which that is that way and that is that way so that basically goes just there like so yes she does and then that one will fit something like like that fits over the top of that one actually excellent let's get her screwed in so what we need now uh yep two km screws these are the smaller ones right we do need a bit of oil for this trust the egg cup let's fit this into place let's turn do, do, do. you know you can't see me screwing it in but i'll show you all afterwards See the two screws here. Oops, there's it. It's nicely in place. Right, what we need is a PM screw for down here. So this is one of the long ones. That basically secures this electrical housing to this frame 
should do anyway. There it is, it's going. There you go. That weren't too difficult. Now we need to do the same with the other side. There we go, you can see it now. And again, there does it really uh, again the two smaller screws. Bum 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 bum. So a little lazy round. Can't see that really, can you? So we'll go on this side. First one, where's it going? Can't see, that's the problem now. Let me just take that out, fit that in there again. longer screws PM to secure this electrical housing with this frame like so and then what we need is another screw here which is a KM screw Do, 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 do. Have some support underneath. We got cable lights in there. That was a while ago. You can see the hole. Um, inside the fuselage center bottom there are overlapping tabs on part 6301 6302 with screw holes in the center check that the screw holes are aligned and if necessary temporarily loosen the pm screws fitted in the previous step fix the parts together with km two times three mil screws as indicated so that is it that is issue 63 complete and we get these for the screws right issue 64 okay so we're on to issue 64 which is a fuselage panel for the underside we also get a bracket and some 5 pm screws there is the fuselage panel looking lovely and that is the bracket that comes with it we don't use the bracket in this uh, for this issue so we do need the screws so let's get them out of the bag so it basically fits under here taking in that housing our electrical housing and screw in here 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 and here so let's just pop it into place we can do this from this position i think i've test for once there we go there it goes all the holes seem to be lined up yep let's keep it there let's get the screwdriver on this screws a bit of oil, let's try one of these at the back. Mm 
What's the first one? Do do do. Well, obviously, I have to turn this over to show you. Apparently, I give nearly gave somebody a heart attack uh, last month. I'm going to turn my Spitfire over. I thought we were going to drop it. No chance of that ever happening. There's a third one. Feel it really tying up against that panel. And there's the fourth one. Excellent. So we get a spur. Right, now. Let's have a look at what we've just done. There we go. And there she is. Lovely jubbly. See that how is it, that uh, electrical housing moves around as it should do. It swivels. Can't do it with the cable. But there you go, you can move it with your finger as it should do. Obviously that is for when it's on its uh, display stand and the plane is um, like, there we go, there we are, there we are, that's better, there we are, the electrical housing there, so when it's on its display stand it'll be doing all this, going into all its different flight modes so you can understand why that has to swivel. But, that is looking beautiful now, isn't it? It flaps. That one's looser than that one. I know what the problem is with that, but I think the motor will still be uh, able to move that, no problem. Anyway, let's put this back down. There she goes. This uh, Lazy Susan has been a great help with this as well. And there we go. Oh, and final look at that. Lovely jubbly. That's uh, issue 64 completed. Right, now I need to move the plane. What's in the magazines this month? There we go. First article. Yanks over Tunisia. Obviously, as Allied forces pushed German and Italian troops back into Tunisia in the early spring of 1943, ground support missions were very much the order of the day for the six Spitfire VC equipped squadrons of the United States American Air Forces 31st and 52nd fighter groups. Brilliant. Number one squadron, I think that is the South African Air Force. From 1941 through to war's end, number one squadron, SAAF, saw considerable action in the western desert and the Mediterranean, principally flying the Spitfire VC. So many different types of Spitfires. The Air Sea Rescue in Europe, obviously uh, picking up the downed um, fighter pilots, as well as um, any sailors. That they will have um, been informed about. Small scale RAF RC rescue began in the 1920s when launches were allocated to flying boat bases in Britain and abroad for the rescue personnel. Lawrence of Arabia, T. Lawrence, then serving at RAF Mountbatten in Devon under the identity of Earth Craftsman Shaw, was involved in rescuing survivors of a Blackburn Iris flying boat crash in 1931 and witnessed men drowning due to the slow arrival of a tender boat. Oh, that'll be interesting reading. Uh, there we go, it's all the OC Rescue, four pages of that. And there we go, issue 64, which we've just completed. We have Bomber Command taking the war to Germany. This is from the Bomber Command, was one of the major divisions of the Royal Air Force in 1939. Early in the war, it could not find an effective role, but from 1942 onwards, Bomber Command began a deadly campaign that devastated German cities and industry. Quite a few pictures. These stories are really, really good. 
the Spitfire. This is a photo reconnaissance. This is one of the models. Uh, I do know one of the models was actually painted in a light blue. Um, I was reading about the photo reconnaissance earlier. Very interesting. And Dickie Milne. A pre-war fighter pilot and an ace by the end of the Battle of Britain, Dickie Milne was wing, wing leader at Biggin Hill when he was shot down and captured in March 1943. And the big week, a big um, bombing campaign by the Allies, where they did lose quite a few planes actually. Um, I think it was daylight bombing. Or was it? Or am I thinking of something else? Oh, in early 1944, the US AAF and the RF waged a coordinated campaign against the Luftwaffe. Although the bomber raids of big wheat were costly for the Allies, the campaign marked the beginning of the end for German air power. There we go, excellent! Cracking articles in these magazines. That was brilliant, and there we go, issue 65 never it is a mortar with a label for the cable we've forgotten all about them haven't we <laughs> <laughs> and here we have issue 65 parts checklist let me get the right one there we go 6501 rotation mortar cable level three pm screws and one spare There we can't really forget that can we? Wonder when that'll crop up again. Label for a cable. Okay, so first off, issue 65, let's get the parts out. There we go. One label, one mortar, three screws. Get rid of the bag, the box the packaging rather. And we can take off that tie and pop on this label right. doesn't really matter there we do 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 try and censor it there we go M7 all the job now we can't test this motor because of the uh, connector I did have what have I done there here we are my battery box but it won't bump, bump, plug in so I can't really test it but what we can do is put it on this bracket as per the instructions let's rubbish out of the way okay dokie so what we need is this bracket this way around and the motor that way around like so yeah oh no oh, that way around there like that the cable's gonna come that end like that okie dokie let's uh let's get it screwed in all right i don't think a little bit vile we'll go on this here Cable at this end and that's one. I don't think we need any iron wheel. That was went in quite easily. There we go. That, ladies and gents, is issue 65. Do 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 nicely bitted. Make sure the cable is at this end and the bracket is so brilliant. We've only got 66 left, looks like it's going to be another quick month. Let's have a quick look at the magazine again. Do you love these magazines? 
First page, Bomber Escort. As the tempo of the USAAF's daylight bombing campaign began to increase in the early months of 1943, Spitfire units of RAF Fighter Command were called upon to escort the vulnerable heavy bombers. And there we have a lovely Spitfire. It does tell you what the pictures are, obviously. And next page. Number five eight five five eight five number four eight five we're in the upside down John. Um, number four eight five squadron, the first fighter unit in the RAF manned by New Zealanders. Number four eight five squadron flew Spitfires for all bare two months of its wartime existence. And there are the pilots. It looks like a down craft there. Lovely jubbler. Neutral nations. Oh, that'll be interesting. Europe's wartime neutral nations were not immune to the effects of war. International law required them to intern the men and equipment of belligerent nations that arrived in their territory. That will be an interesting read. See how neutral some countries actually were. And there's a few pages of that as well. And what article here on the Saab B17A. That looks different. Very different. And on the last page, the Fleet Air Arm and, Air, and Air Force for the Navy. The Fleet Air Arm grew enormously during World War II. Its pilots revolutionised naval warfare with their attack on the Italian fleet at Toronto in 1940 and played a key part in sinking the German battleship Bismarck in 1941. At the beginning of the war, the Fleet Air Arm had just 232 aircraft, but by 1945 it numbered 3,700. Another interesting read. Love these magazines, absolutely brilliant. And here we have what is coming in the next issue. Yeah, 66, another mortar. So, without further ado, let's have a look at issue 66. And we have another mortar. I did already know, obviously. It's been a silly ass. Okay, let's have a look. Tough, it when I come out. Oops, oh, yeah, M5 screws. So, mortar and cable, cable label 3pm 2 times 4 mil screws. There we go. Now, we can test this one. So, let's have a look. This goes on this bracket as well, and I'll give you a surprise. I'm not surprised. A nice little peek at issue 67. Right, that is switched off. That can go. Yeah, that one. No, it's that one. The larger one. All right. At least we can test if this is working. Yep, there it is. You can see it. Excellent. It doesn't work when I've got it in the plane, you know, I broke it. No chance of that happening. Okay, so this little beauty wants to go uh, in this bracket down here. So fish that through there and fish that around there like so. Now, looking at it, it does look as though the cable comes on this side rather than, there we go. That side. Now we just fix this into place, and I've not put my label on. How bad of me! But we'll screw this in first. Put the label on second. Okay, okay. Let's find. Obviously, if you do get these in the wrong way around, you can easily change them around. Well, they're not fitting this to the plane, I don't think. Not unless there's a surprise on the other side of that page that I've not seen yet. And we'll take the label off M5. 
Try and get that in the middle. There we go. Wobbly jubbly. There we go. That's the way I put them cables. You can see this one all here. This one here we've just fitted. And I bet you we've got another another motor here. Let's have a look. Soviet Spitfires, late. Issue 67. Surprise, surprise. Another motor and a label for the cable. My god. How many motors has this got? I'll have to sit and think about what we're gonna what they're gonna use these motors for, aren't they? Okay, let's have a look at the magazine. Soviet Spitfires. The Soviet Air Force. Yes. They didn't particularly like hurricanes in the Second World War. They thought they were inferior to their own planes, so they requested um, shipment of Spitfires. By late 1942, the British government was at last in a position to supply the Soviet Air Force with examples of the oft requested Spitfire, having previously provided a large number of hurricanes, a type the Russians felt was inferior to their own fighters. How cheeky. The first payments of Mark VBs arrived in Iran in January 1943, and during the course of the year, a total of 150 were handed over, plus a further 50 non airworthy airframes that were broken up as first. There we go, so a bit of lend lease. I know we did some lend lease with the Americans as well. Next page is number 131 Squadron. Number 131 Squadron flew six different marks of Spitfire during its four years of service with the RAF Fighter Command. Excellent stuff. It's Spirit of Kent, Lord Can Cornwallis. Mm. And here we have Operation Crossbow. There we have an Operation Crossbow. I'm sure they made a film with that. The discovery of German long range weapons programs prompted the Allies to launch a bombing campaign on Germany. Although it succeeded in delaying and reducing the impact of the three weapons, the cost was high in aircraft and resources. Oh yeah, the bomb Pinamonda, I think it was 1943. Um, what was she called? Constance? I can't remember her name now. Um, but she did spot something in photo reconnaissance. That uh, um, told the British what the Germans were up to with the V rockets. And on the last page, hospitals and recovery looking after the wounded. Large numbers of civilians were killed or injured in the bombing raids on Britain, particularly during the most intense period of the blitz against Britain's cities. Hospitals were also set up to create service men and women who had been injured in battle and shipped back to Britain. There we go, looking after the wounded. Poor guys and girls. And there we have, issue 67. Well, that is that. That is completed. Issues 63 to 66. Right, well, I've fitted this bracket with the two mortars into the fuselage here. And as you can see, it fits nice and bonnet there. There is another motor as we know that will fit under here. Um, I can't see it fitting the other way around because if you tried to do it the other way around it just sits a little too high. And if you have a look at the side of the plane here, this big opening here, this is possibly where the electrical board is going to fit. With all the sockets, all the PCB, all the printed circuit board, uh, all the operations that the um, Spitfire is going to carry out. And all these wires are heading in that direction as well. Obviously, it's not going to be that far down. Uh, far past these motors, these motors, the cables of these motors will come this way. All uh, connect here. That uh, looks about right for me. Obviously, that does fit in nicely. So it's not screwed down. But I'll just thought I'd show you that. Looking lovely, ain't you? <laughs> not a great lot to it this week. But the plane's looking fantastic, and obviously we get another motor for here. Uh, it's three motors. I'm not worried to it's where this is going. Well, I would imagine that will go up the back of the uh, um, the fuselage on the plane. Um, one must be for the rudder. I'm not sure if the tailwinds actually move up and down. I can't remember looking at the video of it. 
Um, anyway, wait and see, won't we? Interesting. Anyway, that's that. 63 to 66 complete. I've got to wait another month now. Luckily, I've got others um, that I can get on with. I'm doing a Shelby Cobra as well. So if you like that, have a look at the video as that. That'll be uploaded soon as well. Um, and if you did like what you heard and what you saw today, please give us a big thumbs up. Hit that notification bell and subscribe, please. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and see you soon. Bye.